Welcome to week three of the Sassy Granny Quilt Along. Um, we're making six more blocks, so grab six of these babies and we're going to get busy. First, if you um, are just jumping in here and we're on week three and you need a little help, uh, cutting and organizing the fabric is on week one. Making or how to construct this block, if you need a little help with that, is on week two. So I'm not going to repeat the making of the blocks this week, but I do want to give a little bit of a tutorial though because I've been asked about workflow. How do I make this block when I'm left on my own and doing it all by myself and I'm like a chain piecing maniac over here. <laughs> I will chain piece anything I could possibly chain piece and that's what I'm going to show you is my actual workflow working on just these six blocks all at once. Obviously, this is not going to be for everybody. I have been talking to some anti-chain piecers recently. So, um, you know, skip this part if you're not interested. Um, come back to the end of the video or fast forward to it if you if you have your own methods of, and ways of doing this. Um, because I do have a few things to talk about with the giveaways and um, and stuff like that. Some, and I think, oh, and I've got a question. So I want to talk to you about that too. So I'll see you at the end. So here is my six... And I would normally just sit here at my sewing table, do all six of these, and then take them to the pressing and do that part and then pin them and then do the rows. This is the way I would go about this block making when left on my own. So I would just get my block laid out and I am gonna do one at a time. There's my block and I would just work my way down this block chain piecing the first pieces and then the second pieces and then the third pieces so let me just show you what that looks like grab the first two the important thing here is to make sure that I keep everything um, in the correct order so that's what I'm gonna be trying to do then I grab the second rows first two pieces And then we're still got pieces for this second row. So I'm gonna grab the third and the fourth. All right, so second row has no more pieces except for that last one, but I don't have anything to sew that to. So I would leave that. Then the third row, I pick up the first two pieces. And then third and fourth pieces. Fifth and sixth pieces. All right, so that's all I can do on row three. So row four, first two pieces. third and fourth pieces and last row first two pieces all right so that's all I can do let me just move these a little bit to the side so then I start snipping these thread and I want to put them back in the exact same place they came from. So this would be like this, this would be like this, this would be like this. And I'll just keep on doing this until I have the block um, back in place. And this is the way that I piece pretty much every single quilt that I work on, just like this.
All right, so I'm back together and then we start this again. So we pick up these two. And then I'm just gonna work back through uh, these pieces one more time. On this one I can pick up you know the last piece so that'll be a whole row almost complete Again, we just get them back in place. And obviously this is, you know, this is what works best for me. You may think that this is uh, too much trouble or keeping up with it this way. Um, so definitely find a way that works for you. I just get lots of questions about it, so I always just want to show exactly how I actually do things. So this row's done. So we move to this row, have a piece there. This row. And this row. I've completed all the rows. Well, instead of getting up and going and pressing these rows or worrying about that top and bottom, I wouldn't do any of that. I'm just gonna stack these. And I'm gonna just put them out of the way and I'm gonna move on to my next block. And this is the way I'm gonna go ahead and work through all of the blocks and then I'll show you how I go about um, pressing them. done. I've got them all stacked up in order and I'm going to take this to my pressing station. How to press these blocks and all that and what I really just want to show you is how I go about uh, the workflow of making these blocks. So I'm just going to um, go and uh, you know start getting these pressed and just show you how I come make them come together. So I'm going to do this a little bit quicker and then um, you know we'll go from there. So all pressed and then we just start doing what we already know how to do and I'm just going to do that really quick so you can see that. Alright and here is where the difference comes in is I would take these two and and I would put them right over here and then I'd put this one in its own stack right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and complete all of these just like that. So I have a whole stack of pinned rows right here. So let me do that. All pinned and I've just got all of these rows sitting here and now I'm gonna go and sew them together. All right, so I just continue on with um, chain piecing style and the only super important thing here is that I don't get them out of order. So that's 
it wouldn't be the end of the world if I did, but I like to, you know, keep them in order just to make things a little bit easier on myself. So I will sit here and run all these through and show you when I'm done. So now they're all chain piece. We're gonna clip the little threads that connect them, but keep them in the order they're, they're in. So I like to do them just one at a time and then just keep putting them on the top like this. All right, so just like that. And then time to press again. It's going to Give all of these a little press just to set that seam before I start pressing them all open. All right, so now, we just start opening up these seams. Um, you've seen how to do this last week, so I'm just going to whip through um, these really quickly. Okay, all pressed. And then, let me get this back in order. I think it was supposed to be like this. All right, so now get it back to looking like it's supposed to look. We've still got these guys, you know, that top strip over here out of the way, and we're going to now pin this these two together. So I'm gonna work through this whole stack I have here doing exactly that. So all pinned up, and I'm gonna run these through the sewing machine and then come back. Um, I'm not gonna video that part because you've seen it, so you know what's what. So let me get this Next up. Down. And I'm going to set these seams. All right, and this is where you get out that those last strips. And if you've kept everything in an order, uh, it would be the one on top. But if you didn't, that's okay too, because you're probably looking at this one. So it's going to be one or the other if you've kept everything in order. Sometimes you can get a little mixed up with what's on top and what's not, um, but it'll either be the top or the, the back. So we just pop this on here and I will get done with all of these blocks just in the same way as okay, this. So they're all together and look really nice yay and there's only that one step or i guess it's a two-part step left which is to sew those last rectangles on the top and bottom so i'm going to do that the same way that i've done the rest of these which is just running them all through the sewing machine at the same time and chain piecing them and getting them all on and then coming back over here and uh pressing them all so i'm going to go through that step now and i'm going to show you the blocks when they're all, all done done here is it a look through the blocks so they are looking scrappy licious i think um that's that all right hey so i hope you enjoyed that video um and um, that was just way quicker doing it that way than it was the way I did the original video where I showed you how to actually make the block. When I'm doing these video tutorials, it's just easier to show you one block at a time and be very, you know, deliberate with what I'm doing. Whereas when I'm left on my own, I just whip this stuff together. <laughs> okay, so one question that I did get last week was that, actually I got this from a couple of people, um, but the blocks weren't coming out to be 14 and a half inches. They do, they should come out 14 and a half inches. So the math is accurate. And if you are having an error, remember there's a lot of seams in this block, okay? So it's there's a lot of room to make your errors. Your errors are gonna be in one of three places. You're gonna either have cut that strip, those pieces wrong. You're gonna have a pressing error 
these kind of errors are usually like you didn't get the fold all the way over you've left you know a little a little fold in there that I've seen blocks like that and I've also um, but the most common error is that quarter inch seam so when I'm using a quarter inch seam and I'm about to have a whole class on these tiny little errors but always if you're using your quarter inch seam always sew to the inside of that engraved line on your sewing machine if you're if you're doing that and you've measured it and you you know it's a quarter inch seam and your and your block is consistently coming out the wrong size then just go a little bit more just like a, a more closer to a scant um, I wouldn't encourage you to use a scant on this block, but it does have a lot of pieces, so, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you needed to do that either. Um, so that's, that's the three errors that you're, you, you could possibly go wrong at, and it's very common to go wrong, and like I said, the more seams any quilt block or quilt has in it, uh, the more opportunities for us to make our errors. Um, okay, so that out of the way. The giveaways. Posting your work on Instagram using the hashtag sassy granny Q A L does make you eligible for these giveaways. But if you're not following all of the sponsors, you're not, you're not going to win. <laughs> so I'll scroll through and I'll find a winner. And then when I check to see who you're following and you're not following all of those sponsors, I can't you know, give the prize to you. So I'll have to go to the next winner. This happened four times <laughs> yesterday. So I had three winners and then, you know, I had to get the fourth one won because they weren't following the sponsors. I know some of you don't care about prizes and that, and that could be what the problem was, but just in case you do care, make sure you're following those sponsors to be eligible to win. So that's it. I will see you next Wednesday. Have fun making your next six blocks. Mm -hmm.